All right, so it's time to look at cumulative frequencies graphs. You've looked at discrete and continuous data. You've looked at grouping data. You might have even looked at creating uh, histograms with continuous data to check out the distribution for this. But what if we want to look at the quartiles or percentiles of a set of data? That's where cumulative frequency graphs come into play. What's up, y'all? I'm Tom. This is Like a Math Class. Let's get to cumulative frequency graphs. All right, so first thing you notice here is we've got the heights from two 11th grade math classes, and we're going to complete the cumulative frequency table and sketch the cumulative frequency graph. So cumulative frequency is just that. We're adding up the frequency of all of our data. So if we're looking at the cumulative bit, this here is just going to be 2 because we're not adding anything to that. Then we're going to take this 2 and we're going to add 11 more, and that's where we get 13. And then we're going to add again 20, and we're going to get 33. Keep going. 48, 56, and 58. So we have 58 people in this data set. Now, typically, you're going to be told how many data values you have in a group. If you don't, uh, if you're not even doing a cumulative frequency graph, you should always add up your frequencies just so you know the total number of data items that you're looking at. So let's take a look at this graph over here on the right. Here you can see I've got the height. Oh, got to put that in centimeters. Almost forgot that. You always got to make sure you label your axes. And then over here on the left, we've got our cumulative frequency. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph the height to the cumulative frequency. Because we don't know what's fully happening in this class, we don't know where these two values are, we're going to start at 140. That's going to be our starting point on the whole graph. So we're going to put a value of 0 at 140, and then at 150, we're going to have two people because this is going up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Every, every line is two units. So there's our first part. You could connect those two points, but I usually wait until the end. And then from 150 to 160, from 150 to 160, we now jump up to 13. So we're going to go up to 13 at 160, which is going to be right in the middle there. And then we go up to 33 at 170. 32, 33, right here. And then we go up to 48 at 180. 48 is going to go all the way up to this spot right here. And then we go to 56 at 190. And then finally, 58 at 200. So you can kind of see it's got a little bit of an S shape to it. And that's kind of what we're looking for. So now I'm going to connect these dots. I'm going to try and do this in as smooth of a way as I can. I don't want it to be straight lines. And I do want it to kind of curve like that. That's not too bad, I guess. Typically in IB style questions or exams, you're given the cumulative frequency graph. So all you have to do is interpret it and find values on there. But it's always good to know how these things are created because it helps give you a better understanding of what you're actually working with. So I'm going to ask us to find a few different values. The first thing I'm going to ask us to find is the median. When we're looking for the median, we're trying to find the rough center. Remember, we're talking about groups or classes of data. We don't know where the data values fall in there, so this is going to be an estimate at best. So we usually say we're estimating the median when we do this. So if we take 58 and we divide it by 2, well, that's going to be the 29th position. And so at the 29th position, let's see, he, uh, so that means as we're going along here, where we get to the 29th person, which is going to be right here, it's going to be in between 160 and 170, what we're going to do is we're going to find the 29th person and we're going to just draw a line straight across and then we're going to draw a line straight down to try and find our best value. Let's see, it looks like we're going from 160, 165, 170, so that's just a little bit after 165. Let's call it 166 centimeters. So there's our median. Another value you might have to find is quartile one. Quartile one is just the first 25% of your data. So we're going to take 58, we're going to divide it by four, and what is that? That's uh, 14.5, let's say. 10, 12, 14.5, so it's going to be right along there. So we're going to take just this smidgen right here, and that looks like that's going to fall right at 160. So we'll call that 160 centimeters for our quartile one. 
And since we're working on the five number summary, let's look at quartile three as well. So you could take 58 and you can multiply it by three fourths, which is gonna be 43.5, or you could have actually just taken this value, 58, and subtracted 14.5. Because if we know that this is 25%, then we know it's gonna be 25% coming down here, the same value, it's gonna be the same value as 14.5. So this one is gonna be at 43.5. So we're looking right about here, bink. And then let's take this one down. Again, if we wanna estimate that, that looks like that's gonna be about 172. So we'll say 172 centimeters for quartile three. Let's color these in. I didn't color them in before. Another thing you might be asked for is percentiles. So percentiles are just, they're like quartiles, but they're percentages. So you could pick any percent to be a percentile. You could pick the 15th percentile or the 20th percentile or the 25th percentile, which is the same thing as the quartile. So what if, what if we had uh, this? And it says, what is the height range of the top 20th percentile? The top 20th percentile is the same thing as the 80th percentile. Because if you're thinking about the top 20th percentile, and we've got all of this down here, we're gonna have 80% down below. So we're gonna take 58 and we're gonna multiply it by 0.8, and 58 times 0.8 is 46.4. So we're looking right about here. So we're looking at maybe 176 centimeters the top 20th percentile. So we found this to be 176, but the, the question is actually what height range? So 176, so we're actually looking at this range right here is where our top 20th percentile is gonna fall in. Now you could also ask what percentile is a certain value? So here we've got what percentile is 165 centimeters. Now the idea is still gonna be the same. We're just gonna go up instead. So we're gonna to go to 165, which is right here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna draw it from right here. I know it's gonna be a wonky line. And then I'm gonna go over from there. And that looks like that's gonna be at, well, I'm kinda, I'm kinda crooked there. So we're at 20, 22, 24. So 24 out of 58 is approximately the 41st percentile. So that's again it's not it's not exact. I mean we could see we can see that we're at least in the right uh, right area because if median is 166 is at 50% um, and this is at 20 25% at 160. We know we're going to be between those two and because we're going up so steeply here that means there's a lot of things happening in this this uh, this grouping right here from 160 to 170. We can also see from 160 to 170 that's our our modal group where we've got the most values happening. So it might just be that we're, that we're at approximately 41%. Again, this is kind of an inexact science when you're using this because we're talking about modal groups. We're talking about distributions that we don't actually know how they're distributing. So we're just trying to get a rough idea of where they're coming from, uh, roughly where they are in there. Now, there is one catch that I want you to be aware of. And this actually caught me in my class the first time we did this. And that one was a little bit different than what we're looking at here. It was about race times. So it was talking about like sprints or marathons or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. But the question is, where is the top 20th percentile of the, of the people who were running this race? Typically, like we just did, when we looked at the top 20th percentile, we were looking all the way up here because we wanted the top 20th percentile. But remember, race times, the faster is the better. So the lower scores, if this were race times down here and not height, this would be faster, this would be slower. So the top 20% would be down here somewhere. So you've gotta make sure that you're watching the context of your problem because that could totally flip this thing on its head. Um, and like I said, me and my class, when we first did a problem like that, we, we all we all missed it. And then we were like, wait a minute, that's not right. And someone, someone finally caught it. And we we're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe we did that. But that's how cumulative frequency graphs work. I hope that was helpful for you going through this process. Uh, if it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, share it with a friend, and I'll see you in the next one.